Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to a world we all inhabit too little. The world of imagination. Our own, yours and mine. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a ghost? Well, one of this Earth's greatest writers did, Oscar Wilde. And having let his imagination play with the idea, he set down his findings in a ghost story that ranks with the world's finest. The classic tale of the Canterville Ghost. And if by chance you should think that a ghost's life is all wine and roses, why then listen to what went on one night at Canterville Castle. Blood! I must have blood! And when I say blood, I do not mean a drop or two. I mean gallons! Or am I not called Gibeon, the bloodsucker of Bexley Moor? Blood! Oh, give me blood! Blood, my foot! What you need is some oil for those rusty chains. Our mystery drama, The Canterville Ghost, was especially adapted from the Oscar Wilde classic for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Arnold Moss. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When you drink beer, do you tilt the glass for long, hearty swallows? Or just tip it and sip it? Well, sipping's the thing for wine. But Budweiser beer is a hearty drink, brewed for zest and character. The best way to enjoy Bud is to drink it. Not chug-a-lug, just man-sized beer drinker swallows. That's when that famous Budweiser taste, smoothness, and drinkability really come through. Smoothness and drinkability that come only from natural carbonation and exclusive beechwood aging. Smoothness and drinkability, too good for any half-hearted sipping. So drink up. You'll see that brewing beer right does make a difference. And that when you say Budweiser, you said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. And now, another episode of As the Spoon Turns, or Cover Clutches. Joel is pacing back and forth across the kitchen floor. Dark clouds scud across his brow. Nettie whimpers softly in a corner of the room. It's not just your coffee, Nettie. It's the last 12 years. Oh, whimper, whimper. Will Joel leave? Will Nettie switch to Kava, the only 90% acid-neutralized instant coffee on or in the market? Kava tastes plain good. It's not bitter. I think when they neutralized the acid in it, they sort of took those nasty sharp corners off the taste. Nettie? Joel? Nettie? Kava? Have a cup of Kava. What a cup of coffee. Oh, Two cups. This incident was brought to you by Kava, the great smooth-tasting instant coffee with the really ugly label, Kava, from Borden. Our story takes place in Canterville Castle ancestral home of the de Canterville family since the 15th century. You immediately assume, I have no doubt, that the castle is in England. Well, it isn't. It was, but it isn't anymore. For you see, that well-known multi-millionaire Hiram Otis had it dismantled stone by stone, transported to the United States, and re-erected stone by stone on his own estate in the Midwest. So it is that one fine afternoon, we find him, Hiram, and his wife, Martha, and his lovely daughter, Virginia, and Jeffrey de Canterville, her fiancé, in the newly restored library of the newly erected castle of the Cantervilles. Well, Mr. Otis, I hope you're satisfied with the job I've done. 
Canterville Castle re-erected lock, stock, and barrel even to the ancestral gardens which surround it. Well, the castle's okay, but I don't know about the gardens. The guy I hired to be the general manager when we opened the place as a tourist resort says the pool ought to be where you put the pine woods. But, Daddy, that's the exact area where the pine woods were in England. Oh, well, Ginny, dear, tourists won't know that. But that was part of the deal when Daddy bought the castle from Jeff and hired him to re-erect it here. That nothing would be changed. Well, business is business. If it'll be more convenient for tourists to have the pool where the pine woods are... Yeah. Now, what's this? Well, you know what that is, Mr. Otis. It's the blood stain. That's the spot in front of the fireplace where Sir Simon de Canterville stabbed his wife to death way back in 1601. I told you I wanted it removed. And I told you it can't be removed. You got any Otis bathroom cleanser around, Jeff? Yes. Yes, of course, in the cleaning closet. You told me to stock it. Get a can of it. But, Mr. Otis, really... Otis it... bathroom cleanser is guaranteed to get rid of any stain. And it'll get rid of this one. Go on, give me a can of it. Oh, good heavens, that vase. Oh, dear, it fell off the mantelpiece. No, it didn't fall off, Mrs. Otis. It was knocked off, I'd say, by Sir Simon de Canterville. The ghost? Yes, I'm afraid he doesn't like the idea of removing that blood stain. However, I'll get the cleanser. Him and his ghost. Do you think I was born yesterday? Jeff wouldn't lie to you, Daddy. <laughs> and, and if he says the castle's haunted, then... Now, look, Ginny... Just because this fortune hunter fiancé of yours, Lord Jeffrey Canterville, believes in ghosts, doesn't mean I have to. Daddy, if you call Jeff a fortune hunter once more, just once more... Uh, I'm not... Okay, okay, honey. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All I want is your happiness, sweetie. And if you make you happy, fine, fine. Here we are, Mr. Otis. A fresh can of Otis bathroom cleanser. All right, let me have it. Now watch. I spray it on the blood stain. You bring a cloth to wipe it off with? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. Use my handkerchief. Now, one wipe, so. Where's your blood stain now? Oh, Hiram, it's gone. What else? An Otis guarantee is an Otis guarantee. It will come back. Not after an Otis cleanser treatment, it won't. Oh! Oh! oh. What, 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 what was that? Oh, what is it? It's the ghost again, Mrs. Otis. Oh. No, it was the wind, uh, something. There isn't any wind. Well, there was something else, but not a ghost. I just plain don't believe in ghosts, and that's the end of that. Well, if you ask me, Mr. Otis, it's only the beginning. The woman, where is she? Here, Simon, dear. Here I am. Get the paint bucket. We have to repaint oh, the stain. Again? I promise you, however often Mr. Hiram Otis erases my blood stain. My blood stain, dear. Oh, all right, all right, yours. But you wouldn't have had it if it hadn't been for me. You... Do forgive me. Oh, my dear, I have forgiven you at least once every hundred years since it happened. I should not be here otherwise. And the least I can do is to see that your stay here remains peaceful by giving that barbarous American his comeuppance. Fear not, my dearest love. It is Sir Simon de Canterville, me, against Mr. Hiram Otis, him. But I truly believe there's little doubt as to the outcome of the battle. A blue blood stain? What do you mean a blue blood stain? Uh, just what I say, Mr. Otis. The stains reappeared, and this time it's blue, Daddy. Now, look, I don't know what you two are up to. Up? To? For your information, the boss painter who is redecorating the upstairs bedrooms complained that somebody's stealing his paint. And you think that we, that Jeff and I would... Who else? But why would you think that? Because the way I see it... Uh... Yes? How do you see it? Well, I don't know how I see it. All I know is it doesn't make sense. 
And we better start making some sense around here because we open in a week. Now get rid of that stain. Once and for all, get rid of it. Do you realize that I have repainted that blood stain by the fireplace four separate times? And each time that meddling American has had it removed. I should think you'd want to forget it. After all, it's a reminder of why you are doomed to haunt Canterville Castle. Oh, dear, and I with you. But you are not. You can leave any time you wish, Eleanor. Oh, Simon, not without you. Oh, my dear. <laughs> Was ever man so loved by woman as I by you? Or I by you. Uh, and yet, I killed you. Because you loved me. But however you put it, I condemned us both to eternal misery. Well, it shall be misery in peace. For nearly 400 years, I've haunted Canterville Castle without hindrance. Yet what that vile upstart has put us through in the past three years... Tearing down the castle around our heads, building it up again around our heads, and oh, 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 oh the noise, the noise. And now he means to turn it, my castle, into what they call a tourist attraction. Never! My dearest, what can you do? That beastly American must be driven out, and his family with him. I know. Let me see what I have in the way of grisly costumes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I think this should do the trick quite neatly. Which is it? Gaunt Gibeon, the bloodsucker of Bexley Moor. Oh, that's smashing. <laughs> I won't let you get married till you get a job. But, Daddy, Jeff doesn't need a job. He has all the money you paid him for Canterville Castle. Have you? Have you, Jeff? You know I haven't, Mr. Otis. But obviously, Ginny doesn't. You didn't tell her. Tell her what, Otis? Yes, what? Well, tell her. Ginny, I'm afraid that just about every cent your father paid for Canterville went to pay off back taxes, liens, mortgages, interest payments, and the Lord only knows what. Oh, Jeff. Well, don't you see, that's why I sold Canterville in the first place. I had to. I, I, I couldn't keep it up anymore. I had no choice. It was, it was sell or lose everything. Oh, you see? He's broke. Flat bus. Now, just a moment. I have the promise of a job, Mr. Otis, a top-flight architectural firm in New York. The promise of a job? Now, look, Jeff, there'll be no marriage oh, until... Oh, oh. What's that? I, I don't know. I'm afraid I do. It's, it's the Canterville ghost. The ghost? Come on, Jeff. Come on now. Aren't these tricks of yours getting just a little childish? Now, Mr. Otis, believe me, this is no act. It's the real thing. Whenever the ghost moans like this, it means he's going to put in an appearance. And I've seen some of those appearances. Now, Mrs. Otis, Ginny, you'd, uh, you'd better come with me. Oh, where to? Well, anywhere but here. I'm not afraid of the ghost myself. He's never done me any harm, but his appearance can be positively ghastly. And you'd better not see it, either of you. No. I'm staying here. What? What? I've Ginny. been hoping to see him, Jeff. Hoping to see the ghost? Yes, Mother. Oh, somehow I have a feeling I won't be afraid of him. Don't ask me why. I can't explain the feeling. I just know I won't be. <laughs> of course you won't. Jeff lets you in on his little gag. But I suppose I'm to be scared to death, huh? Oh, but Daddy, <laughs> there is a ghost. You've got to believe it. Oh, oh, look. Oh, oh, my heaven. Blood. I must have blood. <laughs> He's got to be kidding. When I say blood, I do not mean a drop or two. I mean gallons. Or am I not gaunt Gibeon, the bloodsucker of Bexley Moor? Blood. Blood, my foot. What you need is some oil for those rusty chains. 
And I just happen to have a can of Otis all purpose here in this desk drawer. Cringe, thou knave. Gruffle in abject fear before me. Now, ah, ah, here's that can of Otis oil. Oh! Oh, knock off the screaming. You got nothing to scream about, because believe me, this oil will do the trick for those chains of yours. Leave off! I'm ruining my chains! Daddy, stop it. Leave him alone. And another squirt right here. Oh, Daddy, here. stop it. Oh, Give me that air. Oh, here now. Leave him alone. Can't you see how, oh. how unhappy he is? Oh, now, look, Jimmy. Any guy tries to pull a gag on this me is no like gag, that. no trick. This is misery. Oh, look at his face. Look into his eyes. He's in agony. I've never felt so sorry for anyone in my life. You... You feel sorry for me? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. No one has felt sorry for me in over 370 years. I do. Well, you... You frighten me. Oh, no, you can't be. You couldn't be. No, no. Not the golden girl. Oh, come on, you two. Stop it. Nice little act, but just a little creaky in spots. You clod! You lout! You poltroon! Is it thus you'd taunt the noble lord of Canterville? Hear me, then. I sought but to warn you hence by harrowing up your soul. But there's another way to be rid of you. Death! No, I... I... No, 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 please, no, please, I beg you, don't kill him, don't, don't! For thine own sake, then, child, be warned and get thee hence. I am Simon of Canterville, and easy wrought into murderous rage. So be gone, be gone, be gone! Do you believe now that he's a real ghost? I sure do. Uh, I, I guess we'd better do what he wants us to do, Otis. Let's leave the castle. Oh, no. Are you saying that you won't... You me... bet I am. I paid a fortune for this joint. I'd rather die than see that money go down the drain. Oh, no. I'll tear this damn castle down again, stone by stone before he gets the satisfaction of seeing me run. You hear that, Buster? Stone by stone. It certainly appears that for once, for the first time in nearly 400 years, the ghost of Sir Simon de Canterville has met his match. What happens, you may ask, when ancient English ghost meets eyeball to eyeball with modern American business tycoon. We'll learn more when I return shortly with Act Two. Pardon me, miss. Uh-huh. Uh, can you tell me what happens this time of year? Uh, rhubarb reaches its peak. No. Nope. Uh, muskmelon reaches its peak. No, no. Oh, well, does it in any way involve something reaching its peak? No, not really. Oh. What happens this time of year is that you can get a really outstanding deal on Buick's small but surprisingly elegant Apollo. And with what's happening to prices, you may never have a better chance to buy a Buick, huh? Hey, I know what happens. Yeah? The buzzards come back to Hinkley Ridge, Ohio. Oh. Uh-huh. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, boy. Do I have a headache. Why do they have to make these caps so hard to open? For a very good reason. Children open things that they shouldn't. That's why we have safety packaging. For the life of your child, you can live with a little inconvenience. For further information, write the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, Washington, D.C., 20207. 
This Sunday and every Sunday through to December 15th, you can be a big winner in the M&M Mars Dallas Cowboys sweepstakes. Prizes galore each and every week. And the grand prize, a free trip for two to the Super Bowl. To enter, send a wrapper from Snickers Bar, Mars Almond Bar, or any M&M Mars candy or facsimile with your name and address to KRLD. The more you send in, the more you can win. For full details, call KRLD 634-1080 and stay tuned. This is Jess Smith, KRLD News. I work as, among other things, assignment editor here. And one of the latest additions to our staff makes my job easier. Sharon West came to KRLD with a wide range of interests and experience. Sharon doubles as education reporter and amusement editor. She is eminently qualified for both. She holds a degree in music from Trinity University. She has taught school, did graduate work, and taught at the Dallas Theater Center. Sharon West, one of the reasons KRLD spells news. Now, really, you know, Sir Simon de Canterville, or rather I should say the ghost of Sir Simon de Canterville, can't be blamed for threatening to kill Hiram Otis. After all, it is his castle, or it was, and, well, how would you feel if you'd lived somewhere for nearly 400 years, only to have someone you'd never seen before threaten to tear the place down, stone by stone? Now, you really can't blame him for being in a towering rage. Eleanor! I shall rend him limb from limb. Oh, Simon, perhaps we ought to leave the Americans in peace. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, darling, please. I say no. Oh, Simon, please, don't make me speak severely to you. Severely? Well, truthfully, it's quite possible you've lost your ability to frighten people. Lost my ability to... Frightened people? Yes, dear. You are but a ghost of your former self. Just what do you mean? Well, I very much fear that, that you're growing stale. And in the parlance of the day, why, you simply can't hack it anymore. Hack it? Not able to hack it? Me? Oh, Simon, come now. Were you not reduced to using brute force? You, who through all these centuries have prided yourself on the artistry of your hideous disguises. You failed to frighten a mere mortal. And Simon, an American at that. Well, he's a clod. Altogether too stupid to have even a semblance of nerves. Is that thunder? I think so. It just occurs to me... I've always been at my best during a thunderstorm. <gasps> True enough. And tonight, to judge from that sky out there, will be a night of elemental fury. Oh. A perfect background for haunting. I shall outdo myself this night. I shall employ a disguise so horrible, so fiendish. Something guaranteed to drive the churl out of his skull. What? Ah, yes, yes, yes. That is the question. What, 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 what shall it be? Oh, I have every confidence that you, my sweet, my sweet, will create a costume that every ghost in England, in the world, would give his winding sheet to possess. Oh, you are too kind, altogether too kind. But let me think. Let... Aha. Oh, you, you, you have it? Yes, yes. You, my darling, have given me a thought. Winding sheets. That is the ticket. A winding sheet? Of course. I have an excellent one. Very old, very moldy. The one with the frilled cuffs <gasps> and neck. But of course, of course, do go on. I will wear that and take with me my rusty dagger. I shall approach the room moaning and groaning in a most gruesome fashion. When I enter it, I shall stand over them in the form of a green, icy, cold corpse till they're all but paralyzed with fear. And then, and then I shall cast off the winding sheet and crawl around the room with white, bleached bones and one rolling eyeball. Oh, 
Simon, dear, you have outdone yourself. I dare say even you will agree I can still cut the mustard, my dear. Oh, you can, you have. What of the girl, the American's daughter? Oh, she, she must go in peace. I touch her not. Why so? Because... Well, my dear, you will scarcely believe this, but not only did I fail to frighten her, but she said... Well, she said she felt sorry for me. She said that? Yes, yes. And she looked at me when she said it with eyes... Well, Eleanor, her eyes were filled with sympathy and pity and... Yes, love. Oh, Simon... Could she be the golden girl? I should like to think so, but I fear not, my love. It's too much to ask. Much too much. But I must to work. The night approaches and the storm. I promise you, oh, I promise you, that within a few short hours I shall reduce the cold-blooded Hiram Otis to a mindless mess. Why have you brought me here, Jeff? I've never seen this part of the castle before. It's a hidden passage, or it once was. As to why I brought you here, well, it seems to me every time I want to be alone with you, your, your father shows up, or your mother, and... Oh, Ginny, I... I do want to talk to you. Yes? Ginny, marry me. But, Jeff, dear, I'm going to. You know that? No, I mean now. Tonight. Tonight? Yes, let's get in my car, drive to town, find a justice of the peace, and get married. But, darling, we don't have a license. Oh, we'll get one. How? I don't know, but we will. I'll... I'll manage it somehow. Jeff, this is the United States, not England. Things are done differently here. And, and anyway, there's there's no sense discussing it because I just can't go against my father's wishes. Oh, you don't have to be afraid of him. Afraid? Darling, I'm not afraid of him. I love him. I know what you think. That he's hard and domineering and ruthless and a lot of other things. But you know inside. He's not that way at all. Mm, perhaps not. Unfortunately, I only know him from the outside. But as time goes by, you'll learn to know him better. And you'll see... Ginny, you're not a child. You're a woman. I need you, Ginny. I, I, I want you. Jeff, please. Please, darling. No. Ginny. Ginny, oh, please. Jeff. <gasps> oh, Jeff. Blood! I must have blood! Oh, no. Not tonight. Not now. And when I say blood, I don't mean a drop or two of blood. I mean gallons of blood. It's him. It's the ghost. Who else? Oh, to drive that churl Hiram Otis out of his mind. Oh, 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 misery. Oh, agony. Oh. You went right. By us, he never saw us. Yes, I know. Now, let's follow him and see what he's up to. Oh, horror. Hideous horror. Hark ye to the horrifying moans of the vampire monk. Oh. My parents' bedroom. He's gone in there. Hark ye to the horrifying moans of the vampire monk or the bloodless Benedictine. Who, who, who's there? A vampire monk. See, I bend over you, a green, icy corpse. Watch as I crawl around the room with white bleached bones and one rolling eyeball. <gasps> what are you doing on the floor? Huh? Oh, why, you're the ghost, aren't you? Well, please now, could you be just a bit more quiet? My husband has had a very tiring day and he needs a sleep. And you're certainly going to wake him up sooner or later with all that moaning and groaning. Well, I am a ghost. I'm haunting oh, you. All right, all right, all right. But please do it quietly. I you ride and ridicule me, would you? Oh, but please, you can sound the Pay for it. I, woman, pay with thy heart's blood. You've seen your daughter for the last time on this earth. For the last time. Jeff. Jeff, 
He means me. No, darling, he can't. If he didn't see us following him... I have seen you. Huh? I saw you there in the secret passage, but was too busy with other matters to be bothered with you. I saw you following me. From the back of my head, I saw you. Stand aside, Jeffrey de Canterville. I take your beloved with me into the next world. Oh, no, you don't. I warn you. You're a Canterville. And I would do you no harm, but stand in my way, and I will place on you, as I already have on them, a cantable curse. No. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Stand aside, I say. Would give your life for them. If I must. Ginny, no. Ginny. Oh, Ginny. Jeffrey. She's gone, vanished. Yes. What does it mean? Oh, good Lord, what does it mean? Uh, what? Uh, what? What? What does what mean? What? Well, what's going on oh, here? Oh, Hiram, that ghost, that ghost. He's taken Ginny. He's taken her with him into the next world. Oh, come on now. It's the truth. In heaven's name, Miss Rodis, wake up to the truth. The ghost of Simon de Canterville has taken Ginny out of this world and into his own. And you'll never see her again. And I'll... And I'll never see her again. What the devil are you talking about? It's... It's the curse of the Cantervilles. The ghost placed the curse on you tonight. Oh. What lies ahead for you, Mr. Otis? Yeah? What does lie ahead for me? I can't even begin to tell you. And even though I could... I wouldn't dare... Strange sort of ghost, Sir Simon de Canterville. At one moment, he's almost gentle, tender, and the next, in a towering rage. He acts almost like us humans, doesn't he? And like us humans, he may have jumped from the frying pan into the fire in abducting Virginia Otis. We'll find out shortly when I return with Act Three. to help you solve your shopping problems. Your better business bureau. I'm Inspector Pry, miss. Violet, Inspector. Miss Violet. According to the report, uh, you say someone is hiding in your house. Oh, I'm sure of it, Inspector. I've found things. Sweaters, blouses like mine, but they're not mine. They're much too small for me and all faded and torn. I'll help you, Miss Violet. Who are you? I'm the man from the Better Business Bureau. Those are your clothes, Violet, and you aren't taking very good care of them. Before you buy your clothes, understand what's on the label. For example, if you buy a garment which is labeled pre-shrunk, make sure you understand the cleaning instructions on the label before you wash. And I thought, oh, from now on I'll read the labels before I buy. Ah, uh, and uh, no more shrinking, Violet. Just another helpful tip from your Better Business Bureau. Who will cope with tomorrow for a brighter new day? There's one hope for tomorrow, the children of today. Who will live to inherit all we've done? Who will pay? Who will give love and cheer it? The children of today. Information, write Save the Children, Box 120, Grand Central Station, New York. I take you now down a short flight of wide stone steps, somewhere in the nether regions of Canterville Castle. 
steps stained by centuries of dampness. It is a place where rats and beetles might scuttle about, in and among the bleached bones of a skeleton which lies on the stone floor. Poor skeleton. One of its hands, manacled, claws towards the remains of a bowl which once held food. A door opens. A light appears on the steps. And Sir Simon de Canterville sweeps down the steps, dragging Virginia Otis after him. He flings her to the floor. Here lie my bones. Here soon shall lie yours. He whips a dagger from a case at his side, stoops, grabs her by the hair, and holding her head back, makes as if to plunge the blade into her throat. But he stops short. How can you look at me like that? Are you not afraid? No. You face death, yet you're not afraid. Do I face death? Will you kill me? What is to prevent me? You killed once out of passion and have suffered nearly four centuries for it. Would you dare again? I would, I, I would. Well then, if I'm to die, I suppose I shall. Being afraid wouldn't help matters. But really, I'm not afraid. At least, not of you. Uh, Eleanor was right. Eleanor? My wife. She says I don't seem to frighten anyone anymore, that I can't hack it anymore. Why do you want to? I'm a ghost. It's my only reason for existing. It's not a very good reason, if you ask me. It's no reason at all, if it comes to that. It's simply part of the punishment I must bear for murdering my wife. The Lady Eleanor? Yes. Why did you murder her? Jealousy. Unreasoning jealousy. I thought her in love with another man. I found out later how wrong I'd been. But it was too late then. I assure you my remorse was so great I hardly struggled at all when her brothers chained me in this dungeon and starved me to death. And that? That's your skeleton? Yes. Poor skeleton. Poor ghost. You must be very tired. As only a man who has not slept for nearly 400 years can be. But there'll be no rest for me, never any rest, until the legend of Canterville Castle is fulfilled. But I didn't know there was a legend. Jeff never told me. Oh, yes, yes. And when it is fulfilled, then... Why, then I shall sleep at last in the little garden far beyond the pine woods. What garden do you mean? The garden where the grass grows long and deep. Where the hemlock flowers are like great white stars and the nightingale sings all night long. All night long he sings. And the cold crystal moon looks down. And the yew tree spreads its giant arms over the sleepers. The sleepers? Do you mean the garden of death? Yes. Death. Would you help me if you could? If you could make the legend come true, would you? Yes. What is the legend? It is this. When a golden girl can win prayer from beyond the gates of sin, when the barren almond bears and the girl gives away her tears, then shall all the house be still and peace come to Canterville. What? What does it mean? It means that you must weep with me for my sins because I have no tears and pray with me for my soul because I have no faith. And then... And then, if you have always been sweet and good, 
and gentle. That withered almond tree you have perhaps seen outside the library window. The barren almond tree, yes. That tree will bloom again to show... To show... Yes, to show... That the angel of death has had mercy on me. I should like to do that for you. I know. But you may fail. Yes. And if you fail, the tortures of the damned will be yours through all eternity. You must dare to go beyond the gates of sin. You will see fearful shapes, hear wicked voices. If you are the golden girl of the legend, you will not be harmed. But if you're not the golden... I tremble for you. Well... What is your answer? I will do it. Think, think. Be sure. Oh, do be sure. I am sure. Then turn, turn, and behold the gates of sin. <laughs> back. You are afraid. The shrieks, the laughter. Worse lies beyond the gates. Far worse. <gasps> ah, you are afraid. You are afraid. And I am doomed. No. You will go for me. You will go beyond the gates of sin. For you, for any other soul. And give me your hand. Let me kiss it. <gasps> your fingers cold as I My lips, too, shall be cold. If you are the golden girl, I pray God you are, for your sake more than mine. You must release my hand now, if I'm to go beyond the gate. Yes, yes, I know, only... Let go. Let go. Go. Come back! Come back! Mr. Otis, there's nothing that can be done. Virginia's gone. Forever. Hiram, it's all your fault. If we hadn't ridiculed the ghost, if we had just taken him seriously, all this would have been avoided. Uh, I got to admit you're right, Martha. But that doesn't help matters. All I want now is to get Ginny back. Safe and sound. <laughs> She's gone. Gone. I've been a fool. I, I thought she might be the golden girl, the girl of the legend. And I let her go beyond the gates of sin. Oh, no. Oh. If that be so, I am done with you, Simon. Oh, no, 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 not you. Oh, oh, don't touch me. Don't touch me. You are revolting enough to be human. I tried to stop her at the last moment. I tried. But it was too late. Too late. Too late. Simon. The nightingale. Eleanor. The nightingale. Oh. It sings. It sings in the garden of death. It sings. Oh. And the girl, Virginia. Oh, she sucks. She must have Simon, Simon, look! Virginia. Sir Simon. You've returned. From beyond the gates of sin, you've returned. Did you think I wouldn't? Well, yes, yes, I, I thought that. I knew I would. I'd not have gone past those gates if I hadn't felt sure. Then you are the golden girl of the legend. You are. The golden girl. Are you 
saved now. Oh, yes, child, yes. I'm saved. After all these centuries, released. And you're the one who did it. Eleanor, she is the one. What can I do to thank her? What? What? Oh, Simon, restore her to her own world. What else, dear? My watch is stopped. What time is it? It's nearly three in the morning. Three in the morning? I've got a nine o'clock committee breakfast. I... I... Oh, what am I saying? Business, business. It becomes a habit. My little girl is gone, but my first thought is if... I... Oh, God in your heaven, what kind of a man am I? Oh, Hiram, you're a good man. You just lost yourself in, in making a living. Yes. Lost myself in making a living. Yeah. We spend too much of our lives making a living. We should spend more of it living. <laughs> I guess your ghost knows that, Jeff. I don't know whether he does or not. I do. What was that? I thought I heard... I... It sounded like Ginny's voice. Yes, I thought I heard it too. You did, Jeff. I'm back. I'm here. Ginny. Oh, my God. Ginny. Oh, it's Ginny. Oh, my baby. Oh, my Ginny. baby. Where have you been? What oh, happened you to you? Don't, no, no, no. Don't ask don't. me. Don't ask me that ever again. Yes, but Ginny. Daddy, you... I love you, but don't... Please don't, not ever. Try to tell me what to do with my life. My soul, again. Let me do what I want to do. What God put me into the world to do. You... You sound strange. No, no, not strange. Truthful. I've seen what... What lies beyond. Beyond this world. Beyond us. And uh, we... We here on this earth... We think that we're the end of everything... And we're really only the beginning. Daddy. Uh, Dad. And Mom. And you too, Jeff. There's so much out there that we don't understand. So much. Ginny, what did you see? What's that? Not a bird at this hour of the morning. It's a nightingale, Mother. And... Come. Come to the window. I'm sure we'll see what I expect to see. Yes. There. Look. At what, Ginny? At what? The storm is over now. And the moon, a great white moon, sheds its light over the gardens. Look, the almond tree, the barren almond tree. Why, I, it's blossomed. I can see the flowers in the moonlight. And that tree, it's part of the legend. For centuries it hasn't bloomed, and, and legend said it never would until... until peace came to Canterville. And peace has come. Far away, beyond the pine wood, there is a little garden. There the grass grows long and deep. There the hemlock flowers are like great white stars. And the nightingale sings all night long. All night long he sings. And the cold crystal moon looks down. And the yew tree spreads its giant arms over the sleepers. Jeffrey? Yes, Ginny? He's at peace, Jeffrey. The Canterville ghost is finally at peace.
this story, this beautiful story, we owe to a man named Oscar Wilde. Perhaps some of you know the tragic details of the last years of his life. Well, no matter. What's important is what he wrote. Almost a hundred years ago. Wrote what entertained you in this past hour. And perhaps enlightened you, too. It is better to live than to make a living. I'll be back shortly. Say, do you know what happens this time of year? The swallows come back to Capistrano. Nope. The buzzards come back to Hinkley Ridge, Ohio? No. Bulldogs all over the world begin to shed? Not even close. Oh. This, my friend, is the time of year when you can get a super little deal on the practical but elegant Buick Apollo. And just between you and me, it may very well be the best chance you'll ever have to buy a Buick. I could have sworn this was buzzard day in Hinkley. Hink, this can make your blood pressure go up. And Madame wish? Oh, uh, I'd like Pate to start, I think. Oui, Madame. And, Darling. uh, Vichy Soise. Darling. Chateaubriand, yes, and Petit Soise. Darling. And... Yes, dear. I forgot my wallet. What, again? Oh, monsieur. Yes, your blood pressure can go up, but usually it will come back down again. If it doesn't, you may have hypertension. But hypertension can be controlled. Your heart association advises you to see your doctor regularly. Mais oui. Oscar Wilde is buried in Père Lachaise Cemetery, just outside Paris. I visited his tomb. A tomb over which a sad angel with drooping wings weeps. And yes, I bowed my head. Not so much in homage to the man as to the spirit within him. The spirit within all of us. Our own private, very private, Canterville ghost. Our cast included Arnold Moss, Marion Seldes, Mildred Clinton, William Redfield, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. We've been married for yes, 20 years, yes. happily married. What? You can't throw years away like old shoes. Destroy everything we've built together. Everything we've come to mean to each other. I'm powerless to do anything else. Well, I am not. What do you mean? I mean that you're suffering from some sort of... Some sort of aberration. You're sick, Norman. Mentally sick. And I am not letting you do anything as stupid, as disastrous as marrying that girl. I will not divorce you, Norman. Agnes. No, Norman. In a few months, it'll all be over. This sudden romance of yours will be dead. Stone cold dead. No. In a few months, I will be stone cold dead. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Entertainment in 70 millimeter and stereophonic sound now in its 14th Smash Week exclusively at McClendon's Preston Royal. 
May I help you? I'm looking for a husband. <laughs> this is a florist shop, madam. We have gorgeous flowers and plants. No husbands, though. I know. I'm here to surround myself with their natural beauty, their fragrance, their sensuality. Who knows? Maybe I'll blossom into a bride. <laughs> I think I can help. Stiller and Mira are brought to you by the American Florists Marketing Council, who remind you that flowers and plants are a natural. Will you marry me? I'll have to ask the plants. KRLD, Dallas. The World Tomorrow. Garner Ted Armstrong brings you the plain truth about today's world views and the prophecies of the world tomorrow. Spaceship Earth on a journey we know not where, with fuel to last we don't know for how long, the route we're taking we're not sure of, why we're aboard is unclear. How long we're going to stay here is unknown. Whether we'll run out of fuel short of the destination has never occurred to us. Why we have only 6% first-class passengers and the rest are tagging along in third class is rather a ridiculous disparity between those who are experiencing all the affluence and those who wish they could. But what is the trip all about? Every morning you wake up, you've traveled approximately 8,000 miles from where you closed your eyes, stared at your brains, went to sleep, begin to take deep breathing exercises all night long. Your body, if you've eaten correctly, exercised correctly, which is true in a tiny little smattering of a handful of cases, as far as the whole human populace is concerned, is busily, for those eight hours approximately, rejuvenating itself. Your blood corpuscles.